So let's see how we can use AppSphere's script runner service to create a nice GUI and delegate some credentials for a PowerShell script. We're currently working in a scenario where we need a HR user to easily import a list of Active Directory employees from a CSV file. There's a few employees that do not have Active Directory accounts and we need to get those created and we need to give HR access to do that. So to do that, let's first verify to make sure that these employees do not exist in Active Directory. All right, so there's going to be J Bradley, B Smith, and J West. And when we run the get 80 user program here, we can see that, you know, they don't exist. And we have a CSV file here called employee CSV. And you see that we have three employees, Joe Bradley, Bobby Smith, and Jody West. Okay, so now that we have that, so we have the CSV file, we are verified that the Active Directory users that we want to create do not exist. Next thing we have to do is we're going to look at this script. So this is a, an example script. This can be anything. This is an example script called import Acme user. And all this script does is it reads a CSV file and creates Active Directory users from it. We're not going to go into anything in particular here, but I do want to point out a few things. For example, on line 31 there, you see the get variable SRX ENV. The SRX ENV is a variable that only exists inside of the script runner environment. And I've added some information in here. So down here, and you'll see I'm accessing that SRX ENV variable on 57. So we have a result message property on that. That gives us the ability to send output to the web interface of script runner. So I guess I'm not going to go over this in detail by any means. This is just going to be an example script. So all this script does is read that CSV file and create some Active Directory users from it. So now that we have a basic premise of what we're going to do, let's script over to the script runner web interface here. And I am on the dashboard and I'm logged in as an administrative user. So I can control things, do anything I want inside of script runner. We're getting this all set up first for the HR user. The first thing I want to do is I want to upload this script that we just created to script runner. To do that, I can go up here to scripts and commandlets, then click on create, hit select here. I would select my import Acme user PowerShell script, hit open, and then hit OK. And that actually uploads that to the script runner server. I'm RDP locally into the script runner server here. So what I'll do is I'll just refresh this real quick to get this to show up. And I'll show you that we go back here to scripts and commandlets import Acme user is there. So what that does is that uploads it to the server and it uploads it into a folder called AppSphere script manager upload. And you can see here that we have import Acme user and import Acme user, the history file. So that's where the script goes. That's where it lives. So now that we have the script in the available in script runner, now what we can do is we have to create a delegation group. So I want to delegate HR to create Active Directory users using this script that I created. So I can do that by going over here to delegation and then clicking on create and I will create a delegation group. I'll call it Active Directory user creators, I guess. All right, once I've done that, I can go down through here and click on a few things. And now I need to know what Active Directory users I want to be assigned to this group. And I just have J user. That is my user account that I'm going to use, old Joe user. And then uh, it hit validate, and we can see that it claim brings the sit up, and it is good. All right, so now let's click over here, and we can actually delegate these actions right here. But I'm, I, we haven't actually created our action yet. I'm going to do that in a different step. Okay, so now the delegation group has been created. All right, once it is created, I can then need to go over here to targets. And targets is like a way that you can define context, I guess. We're going to be running the Active Directory module and running processes locally here on the script runner box. So I'm going to pick the AD local target. And then I'm going to click edit. And then by default, it shows up as AD admin. I have already created an account for myself called TechSnips AD admin that has my domain administrator account associated with it. So I can go ahead and click that. And then I will hit OK. And once that's done, our context is done or our target is ready to go. Okay, now I need to create the action. When I create the action, I can go over here and then click on create. And then now I can pick the script that I uploaded earlier. 
And then I have a lot of options I can go through here to add various information. You'll notice that it brings in all of the help information there for the help script infos. So I can do a lot of different things in here. I'll briefly go down through these, but this is an important one here. So we need to select the target. We need to select the context in which the action is going to be running in because I've already set aside the local AD target. I can go ahead and click that here and that will run under the TechSnips AD admin credentials. This is another one I like to do is set the execution timeout. You know, there may be scripts that may run and run and run forever in the background and we want to make sure that those eventually time out. So that's another good one. And then also I like to put verbose report output so we can get some report output inside of script runner as well. And then, like I said, there's a lot of different options here. Here's another good one that script runner does. It reads in the parameters to the scripts and allows you to set a default. So I know you can set a default in the PowerShell script, but you can also set one in here. So let's say that usually the CSV file is located at C drive employee CSV. It doesn't matter. I'll show you why that doesn't matter in a minute. And then we can do things like email scheduling and that sort of thing. All right, so here's the important part is delegate this action to. We've already created a delegation group, so we can hit, click this here to delegate it to our Active Directory user creators. All right, we hit OK. And then now you can see that it comes up and it, we're good to go. All right, so now we have set everything up and it should work. Let's hope so, at least. So let's say that Joe user comes along and he wants to run this script. Instead of the admin URL, he would go to the delegate URL here. And then we can log in as Joe user. And then now you can see that it, he has a lot less information. He just has the actions that have been delegated to him. So he has import Acme user. And Joe user is just a member of domain user. So he has no special privileges whatsoever. When we click there, notice that it does, did bring up the default value. And then Joe user can just click run and then it's going to go through and run that PowerShell script. It's really just as, as simple as that. So we'll wait a little bit here and hopefully it will create those Active Directory users for us. All right, so it says successfully created all Active Directory users. That output came from the output that I have here. So notice on 57, I am setting the result message property to successfully created all Active Directory users. That's where that output comes from. Okay, so now that the script has been created, we can now go through here and just make sure that everybody was created like they were supposed to. And yep, it looks like everybody has been created. So what we've done is we've used a simple domain user with no special privileges whatsoever and allowed him to only execute that single script with domain admin rights. Thank you for watching.